Hi everyone, it's Nick from Astro Exploring. In this video, I thought I would just give you an overview of my astrophotography equipment that I've been using for deep sky imaging. Um, I would call this a beginner's setup and it really is a beginner's setup, unfortunately. The price, however, won't reflect that. Um, as I said in my previous video on the review of the Skywatcher 72 ED, um, this is a very expensive hobby to get into. Uh, there are cheaper alternatives out there, which I will talk about in a little while, um, but I'll just give you an overview of the equipment that I'm using. Okay, so to start off, the main imaging telescope that I'm using at the moment is the Skywatcher Evo Star 72 ED DS Pro. I recently uploaded a video to YouTube um, where I do a more in depth review. Uh, an overview of this telescope um, so I'll put that in the description down below if you want to check that out for, for more information um, but essentially I, I can't recommend this telescope enough it's really lightweight it's really wide field and uh, gives you a great view of the sky um, and it's just a perfect imaging scope for beginners so attached to that I've got an AstroZap juice strap this juice strap um, so all of my kit actually is from First Light Optics, um, and I'll put the links to the um, to these down in the in the, in the description. Um, but this is a, an AstroZap juice strap. This is for a, a three-inch telescope. Obviously, the 72 ED being a 72 mil aperture. Um, this was 23 pounds, I believe. Um, the Evo Star 72 ED is is 269 pounds, and that it's just um, stopping the um, objective lens from getting uh, dewed up um, which is very common uh, especially in the UK um, over the summer you're looking at dew basically every night and even in the winter if it's not dew it's 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 ice and, and frost so um, that is that is really essential and at the other end of the telescope I've got, uh, again, I talked about these in my um, 72 ED review, but I've got the uh, field flattener reducer for the um, 72 ED and connected to that, you can see here, I've got the M48 adapter, which allows me to connect my Canon DSLR. I'm using the uh, 650D at the moment. I bought the camera from uh, camera jungle second hand um i think new these are about 400 to 500 pounds um i got this off camera jungle for 180 quid um actually it was a christmas present from my mum and um it only had 7,000 shutter actuations so uh, and there's not a mark on it um it, it's basically new it came with the battery with us with a strap um, all the things you would expect from a, a DSLR out of the box. Um, so that's really good. What I like about this range of cameras, um, and you'll see other other people talking about this, is that it has the flip screen. So when you're framing up a target and trying to focus um, and, and taking some test shots, that flip screen is really, um, <laughs> really handy to have because it saves you having to, to bend down or kneel down into really awkward positions, depend especially depending on what you're imaging. The other night I was imaging um, Andromeda, which is sort of basically directly up for me. And if I didn't have the flip screen, I'd, I'd be literally laid down on the floor looking up at the screen. So having that flip screen is, is really handy. And so, all of that equipment is sitting on the Skywatcher ATQ5 Pro mount, um, which is the, the sort of recommended starting mount for astrophotography. Um, it's a real shame because, you know, brand new, these cost about, well, nearly 800 pounds. I think they're about 775. Um, and this one has actually got the, the Rowan belt mod. So you see this bit here. Is, is the uh, the new belt mod and essentially that just makes it um, makes it quieter and a lot a lot smoother when um, when it's slewing to a target um, if you wanted to buy the belt modded heq5 brand new um, <laughs> then that's actually a thousand pounds I got this from stargazers lounge 
rather than first light optics this was um this was second hand i just put a wanted ad out there on the forum basically saying i keep missing out on heq5s um these do go really quickly when they come onto the second hand market um and somebody got back in touch with me to say that they'd just purchased an eq6r pro mount um so they were willing to sell me this um basically it was half it was half price i did have to go and collect it from uh, Warrington, which is about a three-hour drive for me, but totally worth it. Um, even with even with the fuel money, I've still saved sort of you know 450 quid um, just by buying that second hand. Um, it is one of the older models, like I, I said in my previous video. So it doesn't have um, like my, um, my telescope dovetail bar has got the green on it. Um, there's none of the green detail on this HUQ5, but I'm not really too bothered about that. It's um, it's a great bit of kit. There's not a mark on it. And um, yeah, the the only um, marks on it are slight bits of rust on the counterweights, but that's that's very common. Um, and this is a go-to mount, so it comes with the SynScan handset. Um, basically, you'll turn this handset on, you'll set it to your latitude and longitude, and I'll, I'll cover this in another video. Um, set your lat and long, and Obviously, you need to to polar align it first. Um, give it the time and the date, uh, and once you're aligned, you can do a one, two, three star alignment. And I usually do a two star alignment. And once you've got everything centered in the frame, you just pick whatever target. So I was shooting Andromeda the other night, M31. Um, type in M31. The mount moves really quickly, really smoothly, really quietly, and. Andromeda is just there in the center of the frame so it really takes out a lot of the guesswork um, for you um, also uh, you can see sitting on here I have a two-way dual controller Lynx Astro again this is from from First Light Optics um, that was 69 pounds I believe um, and I've I've only got the one two strap at the moment um, just to go onto the, the telescope um, but it's, it's two ports. And the, the good thing about the Duke controller is that you can control whether you want it on uh, full or, or sort of, you know, half power or, or, some, or something like that. If you don't have a controller, and they're not essential, but I do recommend them. Um, if you don't have a controller, then your juice strap will just run on full power all the time. Um, if you're in really, you know, cold, frosty conditions, then perhaps full power is what you would need anyway. But if you're shooting, I don't know, in the summer, there's only a little bit of dew around, having it on full power can actually cause an adverse effect onto the onto the lens. Um, so it is nice to be able to, to control that so that you can just get rid of the dew and, and nothing else. Um, in terms of power, so I've got the mount and the, the dew controller plugged in to this. Um, oh, sorry, that's my dog Hugo. He's he's keeping guard because next door I've got four cats. Um, I've got this connected to a. It's actually a, a car jump starter, um, and they're both in twelve volt slots so i bought this this adapter was from amazon for for a few pounds um these cables the the, the cable from the tube controller um came came with the controller uh this one i actually bought separately from first light optics which was 26 pounds i think for a two meter cable um these are, are silicon covered so you don't need to to worry about them, them getting wet while you're out here or anything like that um it's also um got a 13 amp plug on this and I've I mean I've run this um, drawing about drawing about one amp um, I've been running this for, for four hours and it was it was more than more than capable um, of doing that I'm not sure quite how long this will last for um, I'm a little bit um, cautious at the minute just while I get used to the equipment because it's a lead acid battery um, for those of you that aren't familiar with lead acid batteries, if you let them um, run down flat completely, then you can actually damage the battery uh, to the point where it may not charge again at all. Um, hey, Hugo. <laughs> um, 
to the point where it may not charge again. Um, so it's important that after each imaging session you do you do charge this up. Um, and also if you haven't used it for a few weeks, um, you know, we've had we've had terrible weather in the UK. Um, we had about four weeks where we didn't have a, a clear night at all between November. <laughs> Hi. Could you get any closer? Um, between um, November and December, um, we didn't have a clear night at all. Um, so it's really important um, if you're not using it for a long time to also just make sure that you're um, keeping it charged because it, it will drain naturally just by sitting there. It does have a, a test battery power on it. You can see that it's full at the moment because I, I charged that a couple of nights ago. Um, so yeah, I've run this for four hours with no problems. Um, I, I, I reckon I could I could easily go double that. Um, it, it should technically last on one amp for, for 17 hours. Um, but I'm not really sure that I want to I want to test that. Um, so that is my equipment as I as I have it at the minute. Um, I do also have the Skywatcher Star Adventurer, which I will go over in another video. But that is a, a great piece of kit as well. Um, so if you haven't already, I, I do have a website which is. Um, if you haven't checked it out, it's astroexploring.com. Um, it's a fairly new website, so there's not a great deal of information on there at the minute. It does, I do have an in-depth review of the 72ED, where I linked my YouTube video, and also uh, an in-depth review of the Star Adventure if you wanted to find out some more information on that. Um, if this review is helpful, um, give me a thumbs up, consider subscribing to the channel. Um, I've only just started out on YouTube, so um, I've got loads of ideas for videos, and uh, thanks for watching. Thank you.